Admit it, you often wish you were more like this guy. Well, the younger, tougher version. No younger. Not that young. Yes, that guy. The outlaw, the last good cowboy, the prospector, the vigilante, the lawman, riding into that dusty western town looking for justice, glory, fortune, peace. Maybe you long for the saddle, the saloon, the straight flush, or just a second chance. That's where the story starts. It ends with the showdown at high noon, lassoing your nemesis from atop his horse or being thrown through the saloon window. It's the plot of every spaghetti western movie, and it's the reason Great Escape Games created Dead Man's Hand. We're going to show a few turns of this Old West skirmish game. First, let's set the scene. In the town of Rusty Butte, the notorious Nichols gang has just robbed the First National Bank. Kid Nichols and Zach McGrath are stationed as lookouts in front of the bank. Deadeye Duncan is perched atop the gunsmith next door. Jake Nichols and the rest of the gang are still inside the bank. Four of them are carrying a bag of loot. Men carrying loot get the usual three actions per turn, but are somewhat hindered. They cannot use more than two actions to move, and must spend two actions to reload their firearm, since they'll have to put down their loot first. How did the Nichols gang pull off this caper? Well, the sheriff and the marshal are trying to impress Maggie Doyle by going shot for shot in Rogan's bar. They'll have to hope that a couple deputies and a few upstanding citizens with pistols can slow down the Nichols gang until they can gather their wits. Gangs are at the heart of Dead Man's Hand, and each player controls a gang of several men and women. Each member of the gang has unique abilities, but the gang as a whole also has some special talents. Let's peek at a sample character. Freddy Schwanks, the Butcher, is a typical civilian in Dead Man's Hand. His hits number of three means three under fire markers, acquired via combat, will put him permanently out of action. A character's nerve determines how likely they are to buckle under intense fire. For the Butcher, a nerve test roll with a result of six or more on a ten-sided die will cause him to suffer an extra under fire marker. You better be armed in Dead Man's Hand. Characters roll a twenty-sided die whenever they fire a shot. Several factors can modify that die roll. One of those is the shoot stat. You may think the Butcher would be better with the cleaver than the pistol, but his hand-to-hand -hand stat belies that thought. This stat is used when locked in melee with an enemy. When used effectively, hand-to-hand -hand combat can be a superb way to deliver the coup de grace. Each character has a reputation. This number tells you how costly it will be for a player to include him or her in the gang. We are playing a game in which the reputation of each gang is 19, so Freddy takes up one of those 19 points. Freddy carries a pistol. Pistols allow more shots per turn and are good at close range, but their range is shorter than a rifle. Here are the gangs. The lawmen are made up of the sheriff, the marshal, a couple deputies, and a few citizens who just happen to be out taking their weapons for a walk. As a gang, they get braver when in line of sight of the sheriff, and the lawman player can remove a single under fire marker each turn. The outlaws have a boss, a gunslinger, two dudes, and four varmints. We will see that these lowlifes are especially good at ducking back and cheating. Okay, the scene is set, we've met the players, how do we play, and more importantly, how do we win? In this scenario, the outlaws must completely exit the bank on their first turn, then they win if two outlaws with loot escape the town, or if three lawmen are eliminated. The lawmen win if three outlaws are eliminated. Each gang has a specific deck of cards. The cards 2 through Ace in a particular suit are used to activate the characters and also allow the player some tactical options. For example, the lawmen use the hearts deck. The five of hearts reads, play on an opposing model whenever it declares a move action. Its turn ends immediately, it loses any further actions. If in their hand, the lawmen can choose to play this card when appropriate. However, the outlaws could cancel this card by playing the five card in their suit. Players shuffle their cards, deal themselves a hand of five, and we start the scene. Each turn starts with a duel. On the count of three, each player grabs a card from his deck, looks at it, and gives it to one of his gang members. Then each other gang member is dealt a face-down card. All cards are turned face up. Models will activate in order from lowest card to highest. If opposing models have the same value card, the tie is broken by whomever plays their duel card fastest. Kid Nichols has the lowest card, the two of spades. He gets to spend his three actions. Possible actions are move, aim, shoot, reload, and recover. All three actions must be declared before any are performed. 
Kid, the outlaw's best shot, wants to clear some room on the street for his buddies in the bank. He declares that he will aim, shoot at Deputy Barnes, then move. During Kid's activation, his opponent gets a chance to interrupt the activation by either ducking back from a shot or taking a quick shot. Only models not yet activated can interrupt, and the interruption burns the activation for the turn. For now, the lawmen decide not to interrupt Kid's actions. Kid's shot will be modified as follows, plus 1 for aiming, plus 2 for his shooting stat. He rolls a 10 on a d20. The total of 13 gives his target an underfire marker. Lastly, Kid moves to better cover. The next lowest card belongs to the sheriff. The lawman declares move, move, shoot. Upon stepping outside Rogan's bar, his activation is interrupted by Deadeye Duncan perched on the roof across the street. The interruption is a quick shot. Deadeye loses his activation, but his shot is modified as follows. Simply minus 2 because Sheriff Bowman moved twice. Deadeye earns his nickname by rolling a 14. One under fire marker is placed on the sheriff. Let's take a quick look at the possible shooting results. A roll of 1 on the d20 causes the model to become out of ammo and he will have to reload next turn. A result of 2 to 10 is a miss. A result of 11 to 14 yields one under fire marker and a result of 15 through 18 yields an under fire marker and the model must pass a nerve test. Any result higher than 19 eliminates the target from the game. The sheriff then takes a shot at Kid Nichols. The distance is 22 centimeters, long range for a pistol. The sheriff has a shoot stat of plus one, but loses one point for having one under fire marker and another for having moved twice. The result is a miss. The next lowest guard belongs to one of the outlaws in the bank. The outlaw player plays the queen of spades from his hand. The card lets an outlaw grab a hostage. Anyone shooting at the hostage must pass a nerve test and has the shot modified by minus two. The no good varmint Red Perkins declares take hostage, move, shoot. He fires his repeater at the sheriff but hits the barrel instead. Marshall Hogan is up next. Note that his card value is the same as Red Perkins who just activated. The outlaws win all ties this turn because they placed their dual card first. The marshal is the lawman's best shot. He declares move, aim, and shoot to take a shot at the scoundrel, Red Perkins. First he needs to pass a nerve test to fire past the hostage. The steely marshal rolls a 7, needing just a 3. His shot is modified as follows. Minus 2 for the hostage, minus 1 for the range, minus 1 because the target moved once, plus 2 for the marshal's shoot stat, and plus 1 for aiming. His shot catches Red Perkins in the leg, who lets go of his hostage and takes an under fire marker. With the six of hearts, old Chuck Cooper, who's a bit off his nut, decides to rush Kid Nichols. Alas, he can't quite cover the ground. Models cannot use a regular move to get into hand-to-hand -hand combat. They must stop two centimeters short. A subsequent move can be used to advance the final two centimeters and start the fight. However, a charge into contact cannot be the third move of an activation. So Cooper decides to declare move, move, shoot, and fight next turn. His roll of 13 is modified down one for his shoot stat, up twice for his close range, and down two more for moving twice and because his target moved. He puts an under fire marker on Kid, which will help Cooper in his planned face-to-face -face scrap next turn. Next, Nick Hardy slinks out the back door of the bank with the bag of loot. Zach McGrath is next with the eight of spades. He declares move, aim, shoot to fire at Freddy Schwenks. Freddy considers interrupting by ducking back behind the building. He would still get shot at, but with a minus one move modifier. In addition, he would lose his activation, and his turn is next. He decides to stand firm. McGrath's roll of 13 is modified down to 11, and Freddy suffers an under fire marker. Let's skip ahead to turn two. Turn one ended with a few more moves and shots. Freddy fired at Zack but rolled a one, giving him an out of ammo marker. He'll have to reload next turn. All of the outlaws escape the bank. All move markers are removed, and the lawmen use their special ability to remove one under fire marker. Cards that were used are put into a player's discard pile. Hands are restored to five cards. Let's see what transpires in turn two. After the duel and cards are dealt out to models, the outlaws use their once per game of gang ability to swap a card in their hand with a card on the table. They give the lowest card still in play, the three of spades, to Jake Nichols. Jake declares, shoot, shoot, shoot. He will shoot once at the cowardly marshal behind the saloon doors, once at the sheriff, and once at Deputy Regan. 
Knowing these shots will be tough, the outlaw player lays down the ace of spades from his hand, so the shots can ignore cover. Oof. But the law player is holding the ace of hearts. This is a tough choice. He could cancel the outlaw's ace, or save his ace for later. He decides to save it. No point in ducking back from the shot, as the movement penalty won't help, thanks to the ace of spades. The law also declines a quick shot interruption. Aiming for the shiny badges, Nichols starts with Marshall Hogan. With plus one for a shoot stat, Nickel rolls an 18. Down goes the Marshall. At least his final sight was the angelic face of Maggie Doyle. He turns to the sheriff. He must now apply a further negative one for his second shot. The roll is a 16. The sheriff takes an under fire marker and must pass a nerve test or take a second under fire marker. The sheriff's nerve is 2. The roll is modified down one for the under fire marker, but up one due to Maggie Doyle's proximity. Just don't roll a one. Don't. Lastly, Nichols pivots to the deputy. The die is modified by negative two for the third shot. The roll is a 14. Ouch. That's why he's the boss. Next up is the old loon, Chuck Cooper. He sees his chance to finish off Kid Nichols. He declares aim, shoot, move. Since he's starting within two centimeters of Kid, the move will bring him into contact and initiate hand-to-hand -hand combat. Laughing out loud at the old coot, the outlaws declare that Kid Nichols will duck back, thus preventing the charge. The scoundrels let out a giant guffaw when they further announce that their gang ability above snakes means the duckback won't even cost Kid his activation. The laughing stops when the law player slaps down the seven of hearts, canceling the duckback. Angrily, the outlaws decide that Deadeye Duncan will fire a quick shot at Cooper before he moves. Since both Cooper and Duncan are shooting, we will determine the outcome simultaneously. In the end, Kid suffers an underfire marker, and Deadeye hits Cooper as well. Finally, we resolve the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Cooper's die roll is modified as follows. Plus one for charging, plus two for Kid's two under fire markers, and minus one for his lack of hand-to-hand -hand skill. Kid adds one to his die roll for Cooper's single under fire marker. Both players roll a d10. Cooper's modified die roll is two greater, and the old man inflicts two under fire markers on the youngster. Four markers equals Kid's health, knocking him out of action. At this point, we've touched on nearly all aspects of Dead Man's Hand from Great Escape games. There are now 13 gangs to choose from, and loads of scenes to try. Scenes can even be linked together to create the ultimate spaghetti western on your tabletop.